Alrighty, it's Crazy Fangirl Shabby here because I'm having an amazing day, sir. Today, uh, we are reacting to the, what's it called, the 10th episode of Bad Batch. So, we're nearly at the end, six episodes away from the final episode, which is a while away, but still. It's gone for a long time. A couple of months now, which is quite nice. We're watching the 10th episode. We were left with a few questions, some great cliffhangers, and... A lot of, like, not tension, but there was a lot explored last episode. So, obviously, we found out Omega is, like, connected to Boba Fett and Jango Fett, as in, like, v like related, related to them, which is awesome. But if you guys want to write in the comments below what you think about that, because it obviously is canon now. Yeah, she's reunited with the Bad Batch, and she is... You know, she's gone through a lot, and she knows that she has a target on her back now, and that it definitely is from the Prime Minister, and that he has a lot of plans in store for her if they do get their hands on her, in terms of making more clones, and perhaps better clones that could be provided to the Empire. You know, because obviously they are still looking for a way to be connected with the, you know, the Empire and not just look like a throwaway and allow um, conscripted soldiers to take over. They want the clones to stay in power and obviously be known for keeping the clones running. <laughs> I feel like the clones are more effective than soldiers because majority of the time they always miss. <laughs> but anyway, um... Not sure what's going to happen in this episode, except it does say that the Bad Batch's ideology is being challenged in this episode. So, I'm guessing it has something to do maybe with Sid, maybe with some other stuff that they believe in. Maybe Hunter and his leadership, maybe, that gets challenged, maybe? I mean, let's jump into the episode and then we'll find out. But before that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video, but also keep up to date with all my other reactions to more TV shows, movies, and video games. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. That's such a cool robot. I don't think I've ever seen a design like that in Star Wars. It's cool. It's my duty to act in your best interest. And it is why I can no longer condone this unjust occupation. Oh, no. Senator has been seized by Imperial authorities and is in grave danger. We require your assistance. Ooh, I'm guessing the Bad Batch might get that message. So, when's our next mission? With two bounty hunters after you, it'll be wise to keep a low profile. She seems fine to me. Hunter's so loving. He doesn't want to, like, I guess, put that pressure on her and see, like, how much she can take. He just wants to make it easy for her so she doesn't have to go through it. Details are on this. Now get going. Help a separatist. Not good at it. Mm. Maybe if you weren't so helpless, those four laser brains wouldn't have left you here with me. Sid. See? She's not useless. She went through a very traumatic experience. And keep you safe. Omega is a smart kid. I was gonna say, this is probably, like, very hard for the clones. Wait, I'll just pause it. Because, again, it's not only, like, facing the fact that the clones have been, you know, changed into something that they're not used to, but also because of the fact that they're working with separatists. Like, that whole... It's so interesting, just, like, that whole twist of the fact that, you know, apparently the war's ended, but in reality the enemy has won... And, you know, they're using all these different names, like separatists and stuff like that. But it's like, in all honesty, it's just all the enemy. They're all, like, under the same category. And it's just, it's really interesting to see it from their perspective. Because we see, like, how angry they are. And how they don't want to help them. Because, obviously, they've had this ideology of, like, separatists are bad and we always have to take them down. Like, that's their mission. Like, that's what the clones were bred for. And so, like, to help them... It must be so weird and just so wrong. It's interesting, but at the same time, it's like, it's it's weird to think of it in this sort of time period of Star Wars where it's almost like everyone is the enemy and you don't know who to trust. So it's it's in really intriguing to me, but anyway. That would be impossible, seeing as Omega is not on this mission. Uh, right. <laughs> 
That's like, hold on a second. That's why you bring Omega on a mission, because she is a team player, and she is part of the team and the squad. So, like, that's the thing. Like, I understand that Omega is a child and she's gone through something traumatic. Yes, give her a bit of a break. But don't pull her off a mission, because all the guys have gone through... And I, I understand why they're doing it. She's a child, you know, she's a young woman, and she's gone through a lot. So, like, you know, they're being really... You know, they're being like fathers. They're being very protective, making sure she's okay. It's mainly Hunter. The other boys are sort of like, you know, why isn't she coming? But Hunter is very protective, very much like a father figure to her, and wants to pr constantly protect her, which is so sweet and so loving of him. But at the same time, and I think this is sort of the moment that might make it real for him, that she is a squad member. She is a mature young woman who's a part of the squad, who's very good at fighting now, and can take on what she can, um, understands her own skill set that she has, which is very much like a little bit of stealth, like all of them, but you know, she's small and she's quick, so that's to her advantage. Um, and yes, she's not a naive, but she still has a lot to learn. But at the same time, he should, you know, take that in stride and teach her as they're going. Like, obviously, she's going to have her down moments. It's going to be some really tough moments where she has to get through it. But I think this is the episode where he's going to have to understand that, you know, she's part of the team. He, they can't constantly drop her off and expect her to be safe. Because what if the place that they're dropping her off at to chill is even worse than what the mission is? So it's very interesting. But anyway. <laughs> That's Sam Regal and Liam O'Brien from Critical Role. <laughs> it's a strategy game. I'm good at strategy. Hmm. Yeah, there's another skill set she's good at. Strategy. Thirty hmm. percent. Sixty. That's good. That's the thing. The boys need to be more pressing. Like obviously they do have a debt to her, but be more pressing like Omega. Omega smart. Oh god, I thought it was the drink. Oh no! Oh, that's a needle. No, no. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. Nice. Grappling hook. Sort of. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, cool. That guy. I thought the guy at the front who was properly like piloting it was still awake. <laughs> I feel like the senator reminds me of something out of Nutcracker. <laughs> With the hat. It reminds me of the soldiers. <laughs> Damn, it looks so real. What the hell? Animation is crazy. It honestly looks so real. Ooh, nice shooting. Sick. Oh god, they're very overwhelmed in this situation. Oh shit. Oh! Nice one. No, you never much cared for that boss. <laughs> You're going to have to trust me. Trust him. He knows this place better than you guys. Hopefully that doesn't compromise the whole tunnel. I was so worried about that. Captain, the walk is empty. They don't even know. That's so smart. True though. It, it looks like he's a good senator, because the one important thing about being a senator is caring for your people. And he does. Um, it's just in this case, you can't, because you're technically being a puppet and controlled by the Imperials, and they'll just kill him and take all the info that he has and just exploit it. She's a natural. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Cute. I told you to keep a low profile. This is the opposite. Hunter. Mega made enough money to pay off the debt you boys owe me. So try showing a little gratitude to my friend. Yeah, I knew Omega would be using the money to help pay it off. Shit. Even the boys are like, dude. You really paid off our debt? I wanted to be useful. Even if I couldn't go on the mission. How about we put those strategy skills to the test? One match. If you win, then no more sitting out on missions. <laughs> that was a good episode. I will say the first part 
was a little bit bland, just because I think the, the pacing was a little off, but it was a good episode. I did enjoy it for what it was and the things that we were covering in this episode, sort of like what happened last week. It's not as intense as every other episode that we've had, and I like these sort of download moments. There was, again, the off pacing, but overall it was really good. I really enjoyed the stuff with Sid and Omega, but I also really enjoyed the stuff with the Bad Batch, because... Again, it's sort of exploring all these different themes. And going back to what I was saying before, Omega is vital to the team. And though she's not as, um, how should I say it, experienced as the Bad Batch, she still has all these um, different, um, uh, what's the word? Different takes and opinions that can actually help improve strategy or even just different like parts of the mission that they're on. It's because of her on so many points that she's the reason that they've gotten out alive. Just shows that she's very vital to the team and needs to be taken more seriously, especially mostly by Hunter. Everybody else really knows that she can handle herself. It's just Hunter. Hunter is very protective and it's, it's a beautiful quality. Like I know like it may make him look like a jackass, but... It really shows, like, how much he actually really cares for her. And it's that growth that's really helped build that relationship between him and Omega. And that sort of leads to the end part of the episode. Especially because at the beginning he was said, we want to keep a low profile to keep you safe. And again, that leads to him being more protective. And then at the end, even though she's succeeding and he's like, you know, you can see, like, oh, she's doing something really well. But... At the same time, he's like, you went against what I said. You need to keep a low profile to be safe. And so it it's made, it's it's like, it's a two-way street, I guess. Or like a two, du oh, it's a double-edged sword, as they say. Like, he wants her to soar and to do well in everything that she does. But he also really wants to make her safe and protected and just, like, he doesn't want anything to happen to her. And that's why even at the end, you can see, again... That everybody trusts Omega to keep herself safe. And that's why even Wrecker at the end sort of nudged him and was like, you know, what the hell, man? Why'd you do that? That's a beautiful quality because, again, it shows that the whole team trusts Omega. And that, yes, she may stumble a little bit and, you know, they are going to... No, well, not always, but they're going to try their best to protect her always. Um, but with Hunter, he's still learning to sort of ease up on that. Um, because even Echo now trusts Omega to look after herself. And at the beginning, it was him and Hunter who were so strict on protecting her. But now he's like, oh yeah, she'll take care of herself. But Hunter's the one who's really hard to sort of pin down and be like, she can take care of herself. So it's nice to see that at the end, he wanted to see her prove her skills through the game. And see how comfortable she is. And he saw how comfortable she was doing that. So it was nice that he was able to like, quickly change his tone and be like, prove to me that you can do it. I would like to see what you can do. Also, even the senator, like, I felt really bad for the senator, in all honesty. Like, though he was separatist, I, was, I felt really bad because you could see how much he cared for his people and wanted to make sure, most of all, that they were protected and well looked after. But because he was running away, he realised, you know, why am I running? I'm supposed to protect my people. Like, I'm supposed to be here. But again, sort of like what Echo said, you, and it's definitely what Rex has said before. I was going to say that before, but I was trying to remember if it was Rex or Cody. But it... Oh, and Anakin has said it a few times too. You live to fight another day. And I was like, oh, that's so true. So, like, even there are so many Separatist people who are actually... You know, they may be on the wrong side, but they're also very protective of their people and have their best interest. So I hope we do see the Senator maybe in the future episodes, like maybe further along the timeline. That would be really cool. I'm not sure if we will. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on this episode, the 10th episode, Common Ground of Bad Batch. And I was going to say, because... I've seen it, I don't know, because Tumblr is a weird-ass place, but also just, I was just, like, shocked by the mixture of messages about Bad Batch. Are you guys enjoying the show so far? I'm absolutely loving it. Like, I'm looking forward to every week with these episodes. Like, they may not be, like, connected to the main story, but I'm always excited for something new and interesting. And on Tumblr... I was super <laughs> shocked with the different stuff that's on there. Like, I know that there's obviously a big love, for example, Hunter and Crosshair and stuff. That's great and all. But there's a lot of hate towards, like, 
you know, like Dave Filoni and stuff talking about like, um, like wh- how they've ruined the chance to explore crosshair. And I was like, um, what? <laughs> I was like, it's so confused. I was like, what are you talking about? And also it's great to get it in small proportions because there's no rush. Like they're probably using crosshair for other missions other than looking for the bad batch. So I know he's part of the bad batch, but now he's part of the empire. So I was so confused on that. And I was like, um, how have they ruined it? Like someone said like, oh, they've like they've crossed the point where they can no longer explore Crosshair's story probably and I was like g- 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 has the show stopped what has what what I was so confused and I don't understand why and there was a lot of stuff about Omega too and I was like so confused and I just want to say this I, was, <laughs> I don't know if it's because like it's not because like they're into the lore or maybe they're into more the characters etc I don't know but have an open mind when you're watching these shows. Like, it's a big show and there's a lot to cover. So, I don't know. I'm always an open mind to shows like this and shows like the Marvel stuff because you're not going to be able to explore everything that you want in these shows. And sometimes it may be base level, but it's sometimes hard because you don't have enough episodes. In this case, with Clone Wars, they like to space it out. And, well, not Clone Wars. Sorry, my bad. Bat, bad batch. They like to space it out. Like Clone Wars. Clone Wars, they spaced it out quite a bit, just like this. And, I don't know. <laughs> I find it weird that people are criticising it because of, like, things like that. I'm personally enjoying it so much. And I cannot wait for stuff with Crosshair. Because obviously now, he's injured. Which means, and yeah, they were saying like, oh, now they'll dispose of Crosshair. No, they won't. I mean, look at Anakin. Anakin was their best asset. And he got, he nearly died. And yet they brought him back together and made him Darth Vader. Like, Anakin should be the example of why they don't dispose of people like Crosshair. Because they're vital to their plan. And if they still have that strong belief, the Empire will take advantage of that and use that to their disposal. And Crosshair is very much like Anakin in terms of not only being brainwashed, but his belief. Like, he believes that the Empire is perfect. And that is mostly because of the chip. But it's very much like the Anakin situation. Like, Anakin believes that the Empire, like, that darkness can help him. Not the Empire, but the darkness can help him save Padme in that case. But with Crosshair, it's like, I have to follow the rules. I have to because this is, like, for my... It's sort of like that morale in terms of, I'm doing this for my country. That's sort of like what Crosshair is going to do. I'm doing this for my brothers. I'm doing this for the Empire. And yes, it's from the chip, but we have to believe... Like, not believe... We know that, but, like, it's, I I don't know, like, I feel like people are just, like, getting too overreactive over these things. Like, give it time to nurture and mature a bit, because they're not going to fix Crosshair like this. Otherwise, where's the story going to go? And Bad Batch's main priority now is to look after Omega. It's not that they've given up on Crosshair. There's no chance to get Crosshair because they literally will be killed if they try and go after him. If they have a solid plan, then they might. So that's why, I don't know. I felt really defensive in that moment, but you know, like, I don't know why people rush into these things and be like, no, the show's really bad, they're not doing this. It's like, dude, there's six episodes left. Relax, give it time to nurture. (laughs) I don't know. And that's why I was like, ugh. Because I I spoke about everything in the episode, so I was like, you know what? I want to talk about this because there's no other (laughs) point that I'm going to talk about it. It just felt I just found that strange. But anyway, and let me know what you think about the writing because I enjoy the writing. I enjoy the show so much, like I've said like three times now. (laughs) But do you think they're taking it too slow on the crosshair stuff? What do you think? I and all like again, in my honest opinion, I think, and I enjoy it that they pull it out more because it's like. They don't want to tug at your heartstrings all the time in terms of that. That's why they put Crosshair in that, like, recent seventh episode and said, there he is, like, that, like, you know, like, that's what he's going through. It's because, you know, he, he's fully brainwashed. He's not, like, you know, he's not able to break out of it. There might be a trigger that does, but they're not showing it because they don't want to give it away too quickly. So we might see it in the future episodes. But anyway, I'm talking too much. Let's stop. (laughs) So again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Chris Finger out.